Ah, welcome back, boys and girls. Um, I thought I owed you an explanation as to uh, the lack of activity over the past week. Um, things have been just haywire. It's been really haywire. The past month has been kind of crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Compliments to the chef. I don't know what I eat. Oh, that was earlier. There. Anyway, I just woke up from a nap, okay? And it was about, I think, a four hour nap. When I nap, I nap hard. That's right. So, all right, what's been going on? Uh, let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to um, about a few weeks ago, about a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. Life has just been taking a total dump on my family. <clears throat> and it was... Uh, been crazy it's really been crazy because it's my mother-in-law was diagnosed with colon cancer she had a colonoscopy done and they saw um, well, they saw cancer so uh, they talked about well, we need to get that out they saw one section they knew was cancer and they saw one polyp that they were concerned about so uh, and it's thundering um, anyway, they said, well, we need to get that out, so let's go ahead and schedule surgery. There, uh, so there was, um, there was that. And my wife, uh, I think, really think my wife had a, a, a nervous, uh, they call it nervous breakdown, some, some type of emotional break or something like that, because, um, she just, she cried continuously. Uh, she tried to hide it from me, but, you know, we live in the same house, so you had it. And to the point to where her body physically jerked, you know, it was it was just crazy. Um, during that, uh, she noticed a change in her vision, and she went to the doctor, she went to the retinologist, and they said, we can't find anything, we don't see any bleeding, we don't see any swelling. So, uh, you know, could be the scar tissue just kind of moving around and causing it. So they sent her home. A few days later, things got worse. Uh, her vision got worse. Keep in mind, she's only got one eye that she can really see good out of. Uh, and this is the eye that she's in trouble with. So she went back. She comes and said, something is not right. So they got her back in and... They stayed on some more thorough scans using dye and all kinds of stuff. You know, they still didn't see anything. And the doctor was really apologetic because the changes were happening. And there was no cause other than the fact he was saying that the scar tissue was kind of centering itself. And then um, it was just retracting. and It was um, leaving basically, it was leaving blank spaces where it had retracted and kind of centered in uh, where there was leaving no retinal cells there so I mean, she had no way to her her eye could not use those spots to see to take in light or anything <clears throat> uh, he said we can do uh, an injection in hopes that that may help um, she said okay let's, let's try anything so she got the injection nothing changed so she's had to adjust she's had to adapt to that change um, so you compile that on top of the um, other emotional um, pain that she's endured with finding out her mother has colon cancer. So fast forward a little bit, uh, like almost a week, her mother goes in for um, surgery to remove those cancerous portions. So there we have me taking off for um, me taking off work to take my wife to the doctor because I'm just I'm, I'm that type of person we don't really have any anybody to uh, count on uh, except my mother-in-law who is now down um, she's the only one we can count on to get her to appointments and stuff since she can't drive anymore and uh, so I, I take after that then I take off for 
to take her up to the hospital, and we're all, you know, the whole family's there while she's having surgery. We're anxious to see what the doctor says. How the surgery went fine. They removed a third of her colon. Um, and then, you know, then we're in there. You know, her mother, my wife, stays in the hospital with her uh, 24 hours a day for several days uh, while she recuperates from the surgery. And, um, you know, I'm there. You know, I take off that one day during surgery, then I'm back at work, and then I'm there. Um, sorry, Landon had walked in. We'll get to his fiasco in a moment. Um, anyway, during that time, uh, she's in the hospital. The doctor comes in after her pathology report, pathology, pathology, however you want to say it. Uh, comes back, and it's... Stage three cancer. Stage three cancer. They find it in her lymph nodes. They had removed some lymph nodes, so that, uh, they're concerned with you know, is there anything hiding? They get everything out. So she starts chemo now in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, something like that. Um, she's recuperating. She's had you know her surgeries. Her surgery went well, and uh, she'll start chemo there. Uh, it's been crazy. And crazy stressful and then uh, Landon who is laying over here on my bed last week uh, today is Monday so last last Tuesday so about a week ago he had a cough that uh, we attributed to you know just cold or allergies or something it's it's summer they usually deal with allergies a lot or uh, maybe a little summer cold so we chalk it up to that and so it gets uh, Tuesday you know we give him some meds one well, my wife gives him some meds and he seems to seems to improve on into Wednesday when my wife goes to with my mother-in-law to a doctor's appointment and uh, she comes home um, for lunch, picks them up, they go back to my mother-in-law's house. She notices that his cough is still there, and as uh, she's with him down there at my mother-in-law's, his cough gradually gets worse and worse. Um, I go pick them up, and there's when things just go to hell in a handbasket. When he does things, he does them right, let me tell you. He goes all out. He goes all out. Um, no, seriously though, uh, he was there and he's trying to cough and he, he's trying to cough stuff up. And next thing we know, he says he, he can hardly breathe. We figure, you know, it's just congestion and all. We're trying to get him to cough. Um, he starts to panic a little bit and he says, you know, he, he keeps telling me and his mom, he's in a panic saying, I'm dying. And, you know, we're trying to reassure him, you're not. Uh, little did we know at the time. Um, get in the car. We decide, okay, we should go. We're going to the emergency room. All the clinics are closed. So we head to the um, hospital. I'm not sure where we usually go. Well, you know, we just take them in and get their little prescription shot, whatever, send them on their way. Uh, he gradually gets worse. His breathing gets worse. He gets more shallow. He gets more rapid. And uh, we question whether or not we should go, you know, stop somewhere, call an ambulance. We and I decide, you know, well, we should keep going. We, we figure by the time an ambulance gets there, we can actually be at the hospital. We get to the hospital. They rush him on back because they see what shape he's in. And they start working. They think, okay, he's having some type of uh, asthma attack, some type of respiratory. They call respiratory down. They give him like two or three breathing treatments. And, uh, they got him on oxygen. Um, they're poking and prodding him and um, sticking him with needles and trying to figure out what's going on. The rest, the breathing treatments don't do anything. They give him, uh, they give him a shot of something and maybe it's an allergic reaction. Nothing helps, and they finally, uh, in the end, they finally tell us that you know we need to transfer you to the local children's hospital, which is fine. It's one of the best around. It's one of the best in the United States. Um, not St. Jude. It, it, it's a. Uh, that's another one. Um, it's Blairy Batson. Um, 
so they get a transport. They get an ambulance to come to transport him. Um, I go out to the car to um, with my other son, with Logan, and um, we're out there, you know, getting ready to go. In the meantime, I don't know how the little fellow did it, but he endured possibly one of the most painful things that I could ever think of. They uh, they were concerned about his chest and where they're being fluid, so they actually stuck a needle through his chest into one of his lungs. Yes. You were so out of it. He, I mean, he did not, he did not move. He was so out of it. From, I was weak in every single thing. Yeah. He was so out of it that he just, he didn't flinch. Every time they stuck him with a needle or something, he didn't flinch. He didn't, he didn't even move. He just kind of laid there. He would. Not flinch. Um, was kind of not sure. Just, huh? Not flinching. I did kind of flinch. No, there were times that you were stuck that you didn't, you didn't budge. You didn't even blink. Um, so. My wife calls me. She said that you know they're gonna take him. Uh, they're getting in. They're loading him up. They're gonna. I'm gonna meet him over there. While I'm going to meet my nephew uh, with uh, with Logan to be picked up um, and taken home. That way we can. I can go up to the hospital. Um, my wife calls me and says uh, in a panic, she's telling me to get up there now. They're talking about putting him on a ventilator. They're talking about putting intubating him, uh, which I'm glad they didn't. Um, but it was scary. And while they were in the ambulance, uh, he was really struggling to breathe. He was um, actually, uh, the reason why they were talking about intubating him was because the little fellow was too weak to, he was starting to get too weak to even breathe on his own. Uh, he was kind of going in and out. He was, um, he said he kept falling asleep. Um, couldn't stay awake, and uh, his his OS um, sat levels, his O2 sat levels were, were ridiculously low. Um, we get to the ER, well they get to the ER, I get there, I go in, and you know, doctors everywhere doing their thing uh, with oxygen, and uh, they're trying, they're taking blood, you know, little vials of blood after blood after blood, and um, doing tests they checked so many things and um, they said you know okay well we're, we're gonna have to put you up in ICU um, he's got to spend the night in pediatric ICU so here we go from there to pediatric ICU where we spend the next 24 hours um, not knowing what's going on what's happening uh, all we see is that whenever they take the oxygen mask off his our two sat levels dropped quickly. They dropped uh, 25 points in a matter of seconds. At one time, we monitored when he had to, yeah, it went from 95% to 70%. Uh, when he had to take a leak, <laughs> he had to pee because they were pumping him all those fluids and uh, he peed all the time. Just like every little bit, and he had to pee in his jug. But the nurse was great. The nurses were great in, in ICU, and um, oh, it was just very stressful. Is it? Yeah, it sure is. The nurses were great. The doctors come in. Uh, he has pneumonia, and um, he had an infection in his um, in his airway, which caused his airway to swell up to about eighty percent shut. Hence the reason why he couldn't breathe. We saw the x-rays and uh, it was, my gosh, I don't know how the little fellow was even breathing. I mean, the passageway was so narrow. I mean, it just shrunk down. And uh, anyway, after they, they gave him, kept giving him three different antibiotics. They gave him steroids. Uh, they give him, uh, they didn't give him just oxygen. They gave him a mixture of helium and oxygen, which made, they explained, made the oxygen lighter and easier to flow through that, that thinner pathway. And there he is. So, uh, what you got? Oh, go fishing. So they were able to, later that next day, um, late afternoon, they were able to move him to a regular room. He was doing so much better. Um, we went for a follow-up today. Keep in mind, I'm off for all this. I'm off work for all this. And, uh, we, uh, make it through the weekend, scared half to death. Um, 
he's actually slept in the room with his mom while I slept elsewhere on the couch or boys room or uh, just so she can keep an eye on him and uh, so we went for a follow up today and they said he's doing great said it's just going to take some time to get all this because he's uh, sleeping a lot and uh, they showed us the, the blood work and the, the results they were not ever able to figure out what the infection was all they said was it was uh, he had a bacterial infection on top of a viral infection which is a double whammy tell you when he does it he does it right don't he uh, I'm sorry this is long huh that was the day was so short yeah uh, sorry this is real long I just want to give you a um, heads up so now um, we're home and uh, hopefully I can get back to work hopefully I won't be fired um, we can keep our fingers crossed uh, with everything that's going on yeah I hope they understand uh, now um, as of yesterday my car well Saturday no Friday Friday my car's broke down yeah it was Friday my car broke down not sure what to do about it yet. I think it's got a blown head gasket. It's losing coolant at a rapid pace. Not dripping anywhere though. Bad things have been happening. Yes, I know bad things have been happening so much. We need a break. Uh, it's running hot. It's boiling back over into the overflow uh, whenever I shut it off. So uh, everything that I've looked up says you know it could be a blown head gasket or a warped head. Which is more money than I have to repair. And honestly, I'm not even sure the car's worth repairing. Um, not even sure how to get another car. So, anyway, this is my long vlog to explain what's been going on and why I haven't put anything out. Um, so, that's it. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll get some good things happening here soon, right? We need a break, we need good things. We need cash. New car. Yeah. Move to Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I don't know, that would probably not be good. Your mama says I would be dangerous there. Anyway, I gotta go. Where do I have to go? Nowhere. I just need to go. Tell them bye. Say bye. Bye. Alright, we're going boys and girls. See you next time.